Hi, fellow birdies, and welcome back to another edition of Mr. Songbird's Writing Mukbang. In today's video, I'm going to be going over you know, something that's very important to the writing process. That is to say, editing. I'm going to go with a little bit of a different take from a lot of discussions on this, though. Rather than a full, you know, here's all the editing things you can do, or like, how should I put this? This is all the things you need to get your you know, story perfect. This be more along the lines of, you know, a quick and dirty method. First of all, I'm gonna use some ravioli, some garlic bread. This, you know, editing technique is gonna be about getting a lot of bang for your buck, so to speak, where because it's very easy. In fact, it's very possible to spend months, years even, editing your story repeatedly. I know this from experience. And of course, there's diminishing margin returns there. So the more you do it, the less results you get. But basically, this is designed to be an editing technique you can use to quickly get from like zero to something good. It's not going to get to like top tier. Like it's not going to replace a actual you know, paid editor, but it will definitely improve your you know, work and get you, you know, better results. This is assuming you've already got the you know, story decently okay as far as like, you know, grammar and punctuation. Like, if your story is illegible, it's not going to work very well. So first make it, you know, readable, then, you know, move on to this. To think when I was a kid, I wasn't really fond of ravioli. Now I like it. Now, the first step in this is going to be something very simple, but that a lot of people neglect to do. Simply read through your story. Actually, right, that's step two. Sorry, scratch that. Step one, this is something that I've you know been doing myself. It's a you know, good technique to add a bit of description to every scene to I mean, better anchor the you know, reader. And that is to simply, for each of the five senses, add something as far as this encryption goes. For example, um, I don't know, Andrew rested his head upon the cool you know, goose feather pillow and, re and relaxed for a minute. Something like that, basically just a little bit. And it can, all it could be more than that. Like you could, you know, go into in-depth detail describing, I don't know, the uh, wardrobe on the left. Or maybe the scent of decay coming from that rotting corpse kind of thing. But the point is that you do that for each of the five senses. It helps me in particular, especially because my weak point is definitely on the description side. I'm pretty good on dialogue, but when it comes to description, I have a tendency to under-describe, so it helps me like, boost it by a little bit. Plus, it's very easy to, how should I put this, like I said, anchor your reader. Like, if, you know, they can know what the character's feeling, what they're smelling, what they're tasting, what they're hearing, and of course what they're seeing. Although you're likely to have an easy time with the seeing stuff, because, I mean, it's the number one description you see in most stories. Now, of course, you're not going to be able to use it every sense for every scene. And by this is going to be a per scene basis. So, like, each scene, try to add five, one of those five senses. But, of course, sometimes you won't be able to. Like, maybe your character. Well, let's be honest, a lot of times they're not going to be eating anything in the scene or not tasting anything. So 
taste may not be applicable, but maybe on the you know, middle of battle and they have the taste of iron on their tongue. Now, once you got that out of the way for each of your scenes, the next step is what I mentioned earlier. Read through each scene aloud, start to finish, and make edits as you go through. Now, the reading aloud is, it may seem kind of obvious, but it's a very helpful technique because it's very easy, extremely easy as a writer, to, how should I put this? Read what you think you wrote and not what you actually wrote. Not only that, but it allows you to catch stuff like, and he rode through the flow in winds, like stuff that, you know, is either a dot to dot, you know, point to point, a copy of one word, the next, in, like two sentences later, or just very similar. Unless you're trying to like rhyme, obviously. I said, just go through your story, you know, or at least the scenes you're editing, front to back, reading aloud each you know, section, making you know, obvious changes, you know, and how should I put this? If there's anything that's like very repetitive word wise, you probably want to, you know, change those too. You're often going to find a lot of errors by doing this that you could easily miss other ways. range from spelling to ground to punctuation. Like maybe you think you wrote tell, but you actually wrote told, but you're doing this in you know, present tense. Now, the second technique is a variant of the, of the second. So the third technique, third step is a variant of the second one, which basically means we're go through and read it again, but this time we're only gonna be reading the dialogue itself. To find points where the dialogue doesn't work right, where it could use some improvements. One thing you're going to often want to, you know, try to do is, how should I put this? When it comes to dialogue in real life, we're not as direct as, you know, perhaps, you know, we could be. And you want to you know, put that in the story. So, for example, maybe it says, and what were you doing last night? And, you know. She says, yeah, I don't know. Hey, did you take a look at that new Rangers game? That was a really good game. You know, like, obviously she's trying to distract him. But point is, even if they're talking about the same thing, though, they'll often not, like, go, they'll not go, like, hey, and what's A? A is X. So they'll go, like, what's A? And then you know, she'll point out, like, but B is the problem. Which I hope I'm making sense for. And that's a good time to, yeah, catch that. And I'm sure that scene four, right, sorry, step four is to be a surprise to no one based on step three. Once again, reading through it, but this time you're focusing exclusively on description. As in like, and by description, I mean anything that is not dialogue. So if it's, you know, narration, I'll we'll call it description in this case. Now for me, what I'm usually looking for at this stage, of course, like obvious, so like I'll make you know, obvious improvements. You know, the, if there's sections that feel like they need work, I'll do work on them. But I'm especially looking at the following, you know, three things. Words end in ing, words end in ly, 
and anytime I see the word as, As I mentioned before in previous videos, any word that ends in ing is, how should I put this? It doesn't flow as well. Like, there will be times when you have to do it. Like, sometimes you have to bite that bullet. But generally speaking, you're better off re uh, adjusting the you know, sentence to not need the ing. For example, maybe she raced the course, instead of race, she raced the course dodging through the, you know, spikes and, you know, swinging past the swords. Maybe she, you know, rushed through the course, dodged past the spikes, and swung past the swords. I'm not going to claim that was great literature, though. <laughs> but still an improvement. And every little bit is, it helps. Now, similarly with ly, or it's ending with ly, that's almost always going to be an adverb. In fact, I'm not sure if I can think of any that aren't adverbs off the top of my head. And similarly to words end in ing, you want to rewrite the sentence. Because, I shall put, let me give you an example. Which is, which sounds better to you? He shoved roughly, sorry, he pushed roughly, or he shoved. The second one for sure. Let's see. Let's see. What, uh, this one you know, editor, I think they said like two halves equals a minus. Or one plus one equals one half. That's the one it was. It was. Or basically, you had two, if you have two you know, words that are meant to do one, they're not going to be as effective as that one good word. And it may take some extra work, but it's worth it to you know, replace adverbs whenever you can. And finally, the word as, much like the first one with the ing, it's a similar thing. It's going to be like, as you know, she was you know, cooking, he waited, rather than like, she cooked and he waited, or something like that. Now again, you're not allowed to be able to go away with it. Like, avoid it, but avoid it when possible. That's the key. And then the last one is going to be very simple. Run a spelling and grammar check using whatever software you're using. Grammarly is good. There's other, you know, similar ones for grammar, and pretty much every you know, single you know writing software's got some form of spell check. Now, be prepared to take with a grain of salt. If you've been doing this right, you'll probably have more false alarms than not. If only because maybe you had like the character stutter, like, uh, uh, of course. That kind of thing. But it doesn't mean it's not worth doing. And heck, doing like two minutes, what would take you like hours to go through every single scene. That's the very definition of getting, you know, efficient bang for your buck. That's really good sauce. Now, let's hand. To sum it all up, each of these things, you know, adding the little bits of description from each of the five senses, reading through it, reading through it focused on dialogue, reading through it focused on description, and running a spelling and grammar check, this will not make your book the next great American novel. It will, however, make it better. And it's quick and efficient. So if you're looking for something you can do like real quick before you like post something, like, maybe you're writing like, I don't know, a short story or a fan fiction or something that, you know, you don't want to put in like 
weeks or months of effort into before you post it, but you want to get it good as you can quickly. Try this technique. And if you do so, I would love to see how it worked for you. Let me know in the comment section below. But for now, I'm going to pop off. I hope you folks have a wonderful evening. Until next time. Bye, folks.